Hello there, this is my review of the Bosch GKT55 GCE plunge saw. I've used this thing for the past six months or so and I think it's about time to share my opinions on it. So let's get going. So in this review, we're gonna go over the specs of this saw compared to other brands because if you're looking at buying this thing, chances are you're comparing it to other makes so we're going to go through that and then we'll also go through my likes and my dislikes with this saw from using it for the past six months um, but before we get into anything it's worth saying that as a lot of you know Bosch sponsor this channel with tools they help me out a little bit but I have got full clearance to say anything I want about this saw and any of these tools that I'm using by them they are not this is not a biased review. If I don't like something, I'm allowed to say it. So you can watch this review with full trust that I'm gonna say it exactly as it is. There's no bribes or anything going on here. This is gonna be an extensive review to help you work out if this thing is for you or not. So first, let's look at the beans behind this thing. And that is this huge 1400 watt motor mounted to the side of the saw. And it is a big step up compared to the Festool TS55, which has a 1200 watt motor, the Makita SP6000J, which is a 1300, and the DeWalt DWS520, which is also 1300. This being 1400, you get a little bit more power and a little bit more headroom for those deeper and more strenuous cuts which is very useful. And then on the back here, you've got a little dial that ranges the speed from 3,600 RPM to 6,250 RPM. So you can cut a range of materials, metals, plastic, wood, just by changing the speed and the blade, you've got a lot of flexibility with this thing. And as for the blade, as standard, this comes fitted with a Freud blade in here, which is 165 millimeters in diameter, low noise, and gives an amazing finish to the cut. At full depth, this is capable of cutting to 57 millimeters deep, which is about two and a quarter inches at 90 degrees. And then if you tilt this over to 45 degrees, it's capable of cutting 42 millimeters deep at maximum depth. So about one and five eighths of an inch. Now, those of you familiar with other plunge saws on the market will look at this and think, it looks remarkably similar to the Maffel MT55. And that is because this is actually made by Maffel, but it doesn't share all of the same features that the Maffel MT55 has. For example, the Maffel has a scoring system that basically offsets the blade 0.1 of a millimeter away from the guide rail, I believe. It does a three millimeter depth of cut to give you a nice scoring line. You flip the switch on the scoring system, shifts the blade across, and then it does the final cut along your line, which results in less splintering on the top surface if you were doing veneers or laminates, for example. To be honest, when I, I haven't done a lot of veneer boards with this in all honesty, but in the few times that I have, I haven't really seen a lot of chipping from this, if any. So I haven't needed that scoring system. I haven't craved it from the Maffel. But if you're doing a lot of veneer boards day in, day out, then deterioration of the splinter strip on the rail might occur and you may start seeing splintering. But if you're not doing a lot of veneer boards, if you're just doing MDFs, plywoods, OSB, then you probably won't need that scoring system. I've been perfectly fine with it. The other feature that the Maffel has that this doesn't is a fine depth control. The Bosch cuts from zero to 57 millimeters deep and the depth stop indexes every one millimeter between those two depths. With the Maffel, you've got adjustment within those index points so you can get, I don't know, you can get anywhere, 0.1 of a millimeter between those index points if you really need it. Again, I haven't, but it depends on the sort of work you're doing. And then there's a few other little changes with the Maffel. Um, the blade change is a little bit different on the MT55. This area is completely enclosed. You've got no window here. So as a result, the blade change is a bit different. On the Maffel, you would fold this down and then undo it. Whereas on the Bosch, you lift up a little tab, plunge it down, and then it locks with the Allen key in that little window there so you can undo the blade. Little differences like that, but it's worth looking into. If you're comparing this to the Maffel, then fundamentally it's pretty much the same saw. It's just the MT55 has a few extra features that might benefit you. It's just a case of weighing up those benefits. Do you need them or do you not? However, one thing that this does have that the Maffel doesn't is this handle here. So when you're plunging it, you've got 
a little area to hold on to, should you wish. Most of the time you can use this without the use of that handle, but on the Bosch, it's there, on the Mafel, it's not. So now let's get into the guide rail system on this saw, because this is definitely one of my favorite points about this. So when you buy this plunge saw and other brands as well, you often get the option to buy it with a guide rail in a package of one guide rail or two guide rails. Uh, as standard, the Bosch, when sold in a package deal, usually comes with a 1600 meter rail, which is a good all round length for cross cutting sheets and stuff like that. Whereas the Festool, when you buy the saw in a package, it's usually sold with the 1.4 meter rails, which is exactly the same as the Makita. That's also sold with the 1.4 meter rails because the rail system's pretty much the same. Festool's painted green and the Makita's painted blue. And then with the DeWalt one, I believe that is a 1.5 meter rail that comes with it. Compared to those other main brands out there, the Bosch one is the longest rail. And this is the reason I really like it. This workbench is the size of a full eight by four sheet. So if we're converting that to millimeters, that's 2,440 long and 1,220 millimeters wide. So if I put one of my eight by four sheets of MDF on here and I want to cross cut it, this is where that length really comes in handy. You can see with the 1,600 meter rail, you've got quite a nice little plunging area at the start here. And then you've got a nice little bit of overhang at the other side as well. It's the perfect length for cross cutting an eight by four sheet. Whereas with something like the Festool, being a 1400 meter rail resting on a 1220 millimeter board, it means you only get 100 millimeter or four inches of overhang either side of it. The fact that I kind of have to plunge into the first bit of the cut doesn't feel right as such. Don't get me wrong, it does work, it's fine, but by adding a 200 meters onto the rail, it just makes it a lot easier to start that cut. Now what you can do with the Festool and the DeWalt with the 1.4 and the 1.5 meter rails is actually offset it so you've got a larger area at the start of the cut and then a smaller area at the other end. So we're not talking 100 millimeters either side, we're talking about 170 millimeters this side and 30 millimeters the other side because the saw only cuts at the front. So at the start of the cut, if you don't want to plunge into the material, you've got a bigger landing area to get that sort of depth. Whereas at the end, you only need the front of the blade to finish the cut. So it's not the end of the world, the fact that the other rails are a bit shorter, but it does help with this being a 1600 meter length. The only thing this means is when you join two of the rails together, you've then got 3.2 meters of rail, which leaves quite a large overhang either side of the 8x4 sheet but to be honest better to have too much than too little at the end of the day isn't it now don't get me wrong you can still buy longer rails for the festal for example if that 1.4 meters is too short for you and that overhang is a little bit dodgy you can also get two 2.5 and 3 meters i believe with either festal or other brands um, but what i'm talking about here is the standard rails that are usually sold in the kit festal and makita 1400 dewalt 1 1.5 and bosch is a 1.6 that's usually what you'll buy in a package with the saw so on the subject of rail lengths let's get into the joining system with this guide rail system so this Bosch joining system, I think, is pretty ingenious. Let's just slide these apart and have a look at it. This is a solid strip of metal. It looks plastic, it's not plastic, it's definitely metal. And what you've got in here are four cam locks that work with a slotted screwdriver. And what they do, as you turn them, it ever so slightly bends the metal out, which means this thing expands to lock it into the guide rail. And this is a very simple, yet incredibly useful change compared to other guide rail systems. With this joining bar, the fact that it locks sideways into the rails means that that joint you can be 100% sure that the two guide rails are gonna be in line with each other because you've got this flat edge along the back of the joining bar. When these cam locks are pushed out, it pushes the two bars against this edge. So as long as this is flat, then you're gonna get a perfectly straight join. Whereas on other guide rail systems, it's usually grub screws that are tightened from underneath and they expand up into a T-track in the rail. And because they're moving up, you don't really get any guarantee that that joint is gonna be perfectly straight. The only thing you're relying on is that joining bar being a really, really snug fit within the T-track. But if there is a little bit of wobble in that joining bar, it's entirely possible to lock the guide rails so that there's a little kink in them. This could be half a degree. This could even be a quarter of a degree. 
but over something 1.4, 1.5 meters long, half a degree of change here will be a big difference at the end of the rail. So you've got to make sure that that joint is perfect. And the fact that this locks sideways and ensures that that is a perfectly straight line means that your cut 3.2 meters long is going to be perfectly straight. The other thing I like about this is the fact that when you tighten those cam locks, it's not tightening the actual screw against the side of the aluminium guide rail. It's got a little protective block here that prevents any sort of wear from happening and it's going to prevent damage to your rail. Whereas again, the other systems with the grub screws, you tighten that and it tightens into the aluminium of the guide rail. Now, I haven't seen a lot of damage from this short term, but I can imagine long term that's going to start chewing up the guide rail so that's where i think this joining bar really helps and we'll actually just have a go with it see if we can purposely put a kink in this rail and just by tightening this we'll see if it straightens it out so i'm going to insert the joining bar into the two rails there we go get it nice and central and then what we'll do we'll purposely put a little kink in it so i've got a gap of about a millimeter at the top of the guide rail here and then it's completely closed at the bottom so there is definitely a small angle in this yeah you can quite clearly see it so what i'll do is i'll hold down this guide rail and while i tighten this this won't move but we should see this one straighten out and it should move a little bit to the left let's have a look so this one probably won't do anything but then this one see that it's pulled it straight and as with most other brands you get a few adapters that are available with the guide rail system this Starship Enterprise looking thing is a router adapter. So you attach a router to that, it accepts various brands, and then that will slide along the guide rail and you've got a fine adjustment on here to change the offset from the rail. I've used that a few times, absolutely love it. It also comes with a low friction base plate on it, which helps it glide across the material easier. Uh, you got jigsaw adapters as well. I've never really used that one, but it is available. Uh, and then you've got this little thing, which is a kickback stop for when you're doing plunge cuts in the middle of a board. Very simple to use. In all honesty, I'm surprised I haven't lost it yet, being this little thing. It's probably gonna end up in the bin by accident soon. But yeah, for plunge cuts, where you're worried about that saw jumping back, this thing's very useful. We've got a little tab that runs along the length of the guide rail. So this thing slots on there, locks back, and then there's your backstop. So when you plunge this, it can't shoot back at all because that thing is restricting it. The guide rail also comes fitted with these little things that slot on the end and they act as cable deflectors and extraction hose deflectors. So it stops it getting snagged on the end of the guide rail and thus making you get jumps in your cut or pulling the guide rail up away from the cut. Having that allows hoses and cables to slide over without getting snagged and still gives you full access to the T-slot if you're working with guide rail clamps. Now, one of the things that I was a little bit hesitant about when first looking at these guide rails was how bendy and thin they are, particularly when you join them. I mean, look at that. There's not a lot of rigidity to them. Uh, don't get me wrong, the shorter rail, the 1.6, it still, it still holds its shape. It's just compared to other brands where you've got that thicker T-slot on them that allows it to retain its rigidity, these are a lot bendier. But there is a advantage to that. If you're cutting a board, let's say, six millimeters thick and you set your depth of cut to seven millimeters so that you'll cut cleanly through that board and only cut a millimeter deep into the material below if you're working on two saw horses let's say and you've got a small dip between them if you've got a rigid guide rail then that guide rail is going to bridge across that small bow in the material and it's going to cut seven millimeters deep to begin with and it will cut straight through the board but then as it gets to the area that's bridging over that dip in the board, then it's probably not gonna cut through to the full depth. Whereas with these thinner Bosch ones, this is gonna conform to those curves, which means the depth of cut is gonna be consistent along the entire thing. This still works perfectly fine if you're on a flat surface, such as this bench, because it's sitting flat on there, so you've got a consistent depth of cut. But as I said, if you're working between two or three saw horses and it's got waves and dips all over it, then this will conform to it to some extent. It's not gonna do miracles, but yeah, it has got a fair old bit of flexibility to it, which shouldn't really be seen as negative. The only nightmare it brings is trying to get this up against the wall because it's just sort of like flopping all over the place. But other than that, it's fine. However, if you'd prefer a more rigid guide rail and the flexibility, of these Bosch ones isn't for you, then what you can do with this saw 
is take out that little black strip and this can then be interchanged with the Festool and the Makita and other guide rails should you wish. Uh, this also has the added benefit of if you're working on site and your mate has a TS55 Festool plunge saw with the guide rails but you don't have the guide rails for your Bosch saw or perhaps you've left them in the van and you can't be asked to go and get them, you can nick his guide rails and still use your lovely Bosch plunge saw on them. Whereas if it was the other way around, he would be traveling back down to the van to go get his guide rail system because it's not interchangeable. So you got a little bit of flexibility with this, which is really useful, or at least it is for you, probably won't be for your co-workers. So I've talked a lot about the things I like about this saw, but there are a few disadvantages that I've found as well. Uh, the first one being, the fact that it's got a 1400 watt motor on there is great. Lots of power behind it and gives you lots of headroom when working with various thicknesses and densities of material. But it makes the thing quite cumbersome and it overhangs the base plate quite a bit. Now, this isn't a problem for a lot of people, but I solely use this saw in the workshop and I use it with the path guide system on the top of this power tool bench. And when I put the saw onto the guide rail, you can see that the motor overhangs the guide rail by quite a bit. And not only that, so does the base plate. So if I'm using this with my path dogs, which is what this workbench is made to accommodate, as you can see, if I put the rail up against them, then the base plate will hit those dogs. And when the saw is plunged as well, that motor unit is not able to clear over the top of them as well. Whereas the Festool rail has a little bit of extra material here that allows the guide rail to hit the dogs before the saw plate does. You still sometimes get a few problems on the Festool with the motor overhanging, but this Bosch one is a little bit lower and it tends to interfere with the dogs more. So instead, what I've had to do is go out and order some dogs that fit into the T-track on the underside of the rail. So this will slide on top of the dogs from above and it will lock like that. Obviously I'll have to lower these dogs down to get the correct depth for cut. Unfortunately I haven't got them yet but what it means is when I put the saw on there I no longer have to worry about the overhang of the base plate or the overhang of the motor hitting those dogs because they'll both be hidden underneath. So that's something that might affect users of a multifunctional table such as what I'm using here but for those of you doing general work on site and cutting things to size that overhang may not be much of an issue. However if we look at the other side and we look at the hose port here you can see that that also sticks out from the side of the saw. Whereas on other brands, they make that area completely flush. So if you're working with a plunge saw and you want to get it right up against the wall, perhaps you're wanting to cut some floorboards to allow for expansion, and then you can hide that cut with the skirting board. This plunge saw is not able to get as close to the wall compared to the Festool, which is completely flat on the side. Uh, the other thing with this hose port is that there's not a lot of area for it to grab in here because of that kink. So it means that I quite often have the hose fall out, even when I'm pushing it right in there and I am using the Bosch hose here, it doesn't usually take long for that hose to get pulled out. Now I have fitted this with a hose sleeve, which somewhat prevents that. I haven't done the heat shrink on the end, but it can sometimes be annoying if you're halfway through a cut and then you just see the hose ping out. The other little thing I'm not too sure about is the scale reading on the depth stop. If you're working with the guide rail, you need to have it spun that way. Yep, with the plus setting on it. Whereas if you're working with this plunge saw just sitting flat on the material, you need to spin it round that way. The fact you can adjust this accounts for the added thickness of the guide rail beneath and it gives you an accurate depth of cut. But to be honest, it's not. I find it quite easy to get mixed up between the two. I much prefer it on the Festool TS55 where it shows you both scales with or without the rail without having to adjust this. Because with this, it would be quite easy to get mixed up and thus cut to the wrong depth. Whereas with the Festool one, the fact that you cannot adjust this and it shows the setting with the guide rail and it shows the setting without the guide rail without having to move anything, it means it's a lot easier to just get an instant visual cue of the depth that you want to be cutting at. If you're not focusing on what you're doing, it's still possible to get it wrong, but the fact you have to adjust this opens more opportunity to human error, particularly someone like myself. But out of all the downsides of this saw, the one you should definitely be aware of is the fact that it doesn't have a riving knife coming out from behind the blade, which means getting kickback, getting snags on this is easier than brands that have that riving knife deploy with the blade. This means that you have to be 100% sure that the waste material you're cutting off is fully supported because if it falls and pinches that blade, then this saw is just gonna get shot back and it has the potential to be pretty dangerous. Now, this is still something that is possible even with a riving knife fitted. So you should still be supporting the waste material regardless, but just be extra careful with this because that blade 
is on its own when it's cutting. But overall, I would thoroughly recommend this plunge saw to anyone interested in it. What I like about it is the fact that it's got all the features that I need and nothing more. It's simple, it's got lots of power behind it, and it does the job. Yes, it doesn't have some of those features that the Mafel has, such as the scoring system and the fine depth control. I don't need them, maybe you do. Yes, the motor and the base overhangs the side of the guide rail and that restricts my use with the dogs. But the fact that you've got those really nice long guide rails, the flexibility to them, and not to mention the different lengths of guide rail that are available as well. This is a 800 meter rail that has shelf pin drilling adapters in it as well. So if you're doing a bit of cabinetry, you might find that useful. It does everything I need to and nothing more. So I hope you found this video useful. I would definitely recommend looking at a few other product videos around this saw because there's a few extra features I haven't talked about in this because at the end of the day, this is a review. It's not a product advertisement video it's just my thoughts and feelings on this thing um, but yeah hope you found the video useful if you liked it don't forget to press that little like button subscribe for more reviews tips tricks tutorials projects whatever if you want to see more of this kind of thing and i will see you in the next video